Hey, Savvy here with a quick word from our sponsor, Color Street by Ashley Robinson. Did you know that these are 100% real nail polish strips? And the best part, no dry time. That's right, you don't even have to wait for them to dry. Just peel, press, file, and go. It's that easy. And with so many amazing colors and designs to choose from, you know I'm obsessed. Grab yours today. Just click on the link in the description box below. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I am Savvy. And I am Sage. And we are joined today by the lovely Peggy. And Peggy is a a lactation nurse, and she's just newly retired, but she is up on all her licensing, and you've been doing a lot working with women and breastfeeding, and you know all about everything when it comes to nursing, I'm sure. For the past 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good. So we're gonna start with some some good questions for you. Yes, and so this is actually, even though I've known you for a while, I never realized that lactation nursing was any type of a specialized field. I mean, I would have thought of pediatrics, and but having been a mom myself and going down that road, um, I wish I'd hooked up with you back then because <laughs> it, it ain't easy for some for some of us women. So this is kind of just a, a basic question I would ask anyone that goes into any field, but what in particular inspired you to go into that area of nursing? Well, I had been a postpartum nurse, oh. and I after when I first started as an RN back in 85, you had to do one year of med surge on nursing before you could go into any specialty. Well, then after the first year, then I did postpartum, antepartum, and newborn nursery when they, back when they had the newborn nurseries. Oh, God. And I loved it. Um, but then I had children and I stayed home for 22 years. And um, once they were off to college, I kind of thought, what do I do with myself? Did a few other things and and then uh, started taking some nurse refresher courses. I had kept my license um, inactive, so I was able to activate it without having to take boards again. And then it just so happened that um, the hospital where I had done a refresher course, my husband was trying to help a gal get into the NICU as a job, and he did successfully help her get that position. But they wanted a lactation uh, consultant RN, mm-hmm. and at the time, and I said, I'll do it. <laughs> so um, I did the training. It was a year long. Um, I t- took the lactation counselor education course first, and then I did the nine month um, in class um, lactation consultant, Gosh. and then took the international boards following that. Yes. Wow. It's, it's, called I, it's called IBCLC, it's International Board. Of uh, lactation consultants. Wow, it's like having a PhD in lactation nursing. I mean, it's kind of, kind of, yeah, it I is. Mean, really they they require. Um, I think they're changing the rules, but I have to take the exam again after ten years. You have to take, you can submit. I think it was ninety two. Now it's seventy some um, continuing edu- education oh, credits at five years, and then you have to take the exam. You can or mm-hmm. you can do the exam. Yeah. But I'm forced to take the exam this year. They're going to kind of grandfather in people after me, so I'm the last one to be forced to take that. So you were, oh, wow. you were inspired then from already having worked in postpartum, work in women's health. Kind of yeah, seems like that would, yeah. in, you know, that would involve also right. not just the changes, the physical changes, but also breast changes. Right. Mm-hmm. Back then, we didn't like you talking about not mm-hmm. having the help in the yeah. hospital. We were it. The mm-hmm. postpartum mm-hmm. nurses were it. Right. There, there weren't lactation consultants at that time. I think about the time that I had my first children, um, it was becoming a profession, so about 1987. Mm-hmm. I think there were some before that, but you didn't see right. it in hospitals mm-hmm. um, in Wisconsin where I was or in right. um, San Diego where I had my children. So. Well, I'm glad there's people yeah. like you around. Yeah, there were the Lynchery League, but that's yeah. in the community that's not in the hospital where women need the help sure. right after delivery. So that's how it evolved. <laughs> well, I have a great question. This is something that I will I want to know for myself. So it's been a known fact that breastfeeding can reduce a woman's chance of getting breast cancer. Why is that? I have, I'm not really sure why. Oh, really? If it's oh, the, good. I asked if it's a good the flow of the milk in the ducts uh-huh. that help prevent um, the cellular changes, 
we, okay. I don't really have any. You know, they no, say I mean, it, there may be scientists that have some yeah. of that evidence that would be able they to. They say it reduces your chances by, I think, 30% even. You had told me uh, before that, you know, the, the longer that you breastfeed, the the better your risk against having cancer. Yeah, right? they say if a woman, a woman can breastfeed two years in her life, you know, total, mm -hmm. that she, it really significantly drops mm -hmm. off the risk of breast, uh, mm -hmm. breast cancer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And now That's they're finding, it, it's been known about uterine cancer, but now there's even some evidence of ovarian and cervical uh, that, cancer. That breastfeeding breast helps with reducing the risk of that getting those? Wow. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it also reduces the risk of that mother if she's prone towards diabetes, it's more like a seven year, the, from what I know, I may not be right. up on the current research, but seven years longer before she'll get diabetes. Let's say she was going oh. to get diabetes mm -hmm. at 40, it'd be more likely 47 if she breastfeeds. Okay. And the risk with diabetes is that the longer you have it, the more uh, complications you get. So if okay. we can delay that yeah. happening yeah. And, and also, sure. And you uh, obesity it helps mothers with um, obesity too, and wow. because burning, of the extra calories. Burning yeah. like yeah. a thousand calories a day just to produce. Uh, five hundred is what I've heard. heard but, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I guess it depends on how much your child eats. Yeah, or if you have twins. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah, I like the idea that it was so much more convenient. You did not have to get. I do too. I mean, it's like. You're already in a daze anyway because your body has already gone through a million different changes when you've just had a baby. Mm -hmm. And then I would just lay down and I never was going to roll off over that kid. That was, no, no, you know, there's no way no. I could have done that. <laughs> no, but I would just fall asleep along with him. And yeah. you know, it was to me, it was it was convenience. It's already the right temperature, it's already the right formula, you know. And your body produces the correct yeah. formula. So if your it's baby's cheaper. sick, your body will create mm -hmm. antibodies to yeah, help. Right, to That's help. why they were yeah. doing when COVID came, mm -hmm. uh, women that were had COVID mm -hmm. were breastfeeding and giving their milk to their babies in order to help prevent their babies from getting COVID. That's what yeah. I hear anyway. Yeah. That's well, pretty I just unique. Read, I just read on ACOG, which is the Academy of um, Obstetricians and mm -hmm. you know, delivery doctors, yeah, uh -huh. that they have found um, antibody, COVID antibodies in cord blood. When oh, wow. blood. So oh. if a woman hasn't had COVID or it it should it should help women decide to get the vaccine. Yeah. Um, you know, because if you get the vaccine you're going to produce antibodies hopefully mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're going to pass that to your infant before your baby's born. So mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's just depending when. Um, right now the statement is that pregnant women should be vaccinated. Yeah. But when they do, if they wait till after the 13th week or, yeah. or what, but, mm -hmm. you know, huh. who knows. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I just found that out. It's very interesting. Yes. Yeah, in my retirement months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still doing it. <laughs> no, yeah. not really. But <laughs> so I'm wondering if there is a specific memory uh, of a true success story where you might have dealt with a, with a new mother that was just having tremendous issues and she finally succeeded and continued to breastfeed? Well, I can't, you know, I've had so many wonderful experiences with moms that I can't really say one specific was better than the other. Mm -hmm. All I can say is that there's incredible joy in seeing a mom that's had difficulties maybe with another pregnancy and with this one, this new baby being able to see her baby adequately latch or see adequate milk supply mm -hmm. yeah. and that's just I mean you know yeah. I received so much more joy than I and, and then you know what I gave you know? <laughs> so I miss it I do miss it I but it was do. time yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would want to know what advice would you give a new mom that is fearful of breastfeeding kind of doesn't really even know if she wants to try she's thinking maybe she should just go the formula route and not even What's the best advice you could give to encourage her to, to breastfeed? Well, we don't want to ever have a mom deciding out of guilt. We want her to educate herself and educate herself on the benefits and then she can make an educated decision about right. whether she's going to exclusively breastfeed um, 
for a while for however long she and the baby it works out right or if she's going to do breast or bottle or if she's going to do, do bottle only right. is to educate yourself they can go to the academy of pediatrics it's google aap breastfeeding benefits and there's just a whole list of all the the benefits and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. they can also go to uh you know like i said acog and look at the maternal benefits um, and if she's had problems in the past, know that every baby's different. Mm -hmm. Their oral anatomy is different. So okay. a baby that might have had a tongue tie couldn't latch. This baby may, may not be yeah. the same. Yeah. And, and we don't want to push moms into this guilt. And I think that's where the millennials are really feeling like, I'm just going to choose breast and bottle. Um, we want a mom to be able, so many times in the hospital, moms would be afraid to tell me I don't want to do this so they just kind of go through the motions right and they're usually supplementing with formula before they leave the hospital mm -hmm. because they're afraid to say it yeah. to say it to us yeah. and so I got so I would tell them look I'm here to help you with your goals and your plan mm -hmm. and I can help you with suppressing if let's say they've been pumping we, we if you're gonna bottle feed we need to suppress milk you know and here are some things that will help Mm -hmm. to prevent engorgement or to treat engorgement that mm -hmm. can happen but um i think i think a woman's right to choose what she wants to do for feeding i think should be based on her first educating herself so that she's making an educated decision about what she's going to right. uh, do and what works for her Absolutely. i've had moms come in for outpatient that have tried and tried let's say they've had a baby with a tongue tie and they've had a revision there's still dysfunctional suck where either it's causing the mother extreme pain mm -hmm. or the baby can't take in enough so the baby's needing to be supplemented because they're you know kind of failure to thrive without right. the extra mm -hmm. and those moms are basically asking for permission to quit to quit and yeah. i give them that permission yeah. to quit at yeah. that point because there are complications of you know there's um something it's not anything that i wrote down but i was just wondering because we're again talking about that and then breastfeeding and so you know and other women who've had <clears throat> babies know that even if whether you're with the, your baby or not you go into store or somewhere church or whatever you hear some other baby crying and all of a sudden you have that letdown <laughs> reflex it's completely something you can't control yeah <laughs> but uh, also if you're shopping like you know a, a, a new mother does not want to be housebound all the time you know i mean for maybe the first week or mm -hmm. so i those were the days when we'd go to the mall, you know, and I'd go with a couple of my friends and all of a sudden, you know, I would take one of my sons with me because I fed both of them that way. And um, it just didn't, you know, I've lived overseas and everything. It didn't bother me to just, okay, I'm gonna feed in public, but I put a little blanket over him and me. But I just find it so extraordinarily ridiculous when I think of, <clears throat> Some people not accepting that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Have you had any mothers talk to you about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, uh, San Diego County Breastfeeding Coalition, um, we would encourage moms if they ever did encounter any kind of negativity that way to contact them. And they were very wonderful. I was on their board for a couple of years. They, and I'm still a member, but they would write a letter to, um, that company or wow. that, and, the and try to yeah. try to not be condescending but to educate. <laughs> educate. Yeah. Yes, we had an example of a mother that um, had to be in court and the officer in the court told her that her baby had no place being there and no place breastfeeding. Wow. And so San Diego, she came to San Diego Breastfeeding Coalition, County mm -hmm. Breastfeeding Coalition and they wrote a letter to, ed to educate on, mm -hmm. on the normalcy yeah. of breastfeeding and Correct. breastfeeding in public. I'm and, gonna guess yeah. a police officer was a guy, not a female. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good yes. guess. <laughs> but you know, there, people get more and more educated. I remember just kind of, I would listen to the sports radio on the way to work mm -hmm. and just listening to these men who tend to, tend to be, um, I don't know, maybe macho, I would yeah. say, yeah, yeah, but they yeah. were talking about, it's normal, you know, and oh, I thought yeah. we've come a long way. Uh, yeah. Still, yeah. We they still they have some ignorance, but uh, we've come a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So. You got to think about the health of the mom and the baby, because the whole ordeal from the moment of conception all the way through 
you know, mm -hmm. the birth is just beginning a whole other type of pregnancy in yeah. a way. Yeah. Then, mm -hmm. In fact, don't they say that um, when you're still nursing your child, I think I heard something like this, it's really like being in the womb with a view uh -huh. for the baby. I that term, but the oh, baby's for the still, baby. Yeah, the baby's still in the womb with a view because they can see, but they're still connected to the mother because yeah. of yeah. that nurturing. I, I also recall when I finally, you know, when I take the babies to the, and I'm sure you experience this and other women, you know, when I took them to the pediatrician, you know, because they start, they have checkups like almost like the Very first frequently. two weeks yeah. and after the third, yeah. you know, whatever, uh, eight weeks and all this, you know, all these baby checks. I, I remember just feeling so proud that they gained weight from my milk, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah that a, is something to be very There's a lot of metamorphosis yeah. changes that go on when you become a mother that when you're when you're just a single woman, or well, married or whatever, if, if you're a woman without a baby, that you, it, you can't think of these intricate situations you're going to be experiencing because you, there's no way you can relate to it mm -hmm. intellectually. It happens, it's yeah, got to be physically, yeah. but it's like... Your baby gained three pounds in a month, and they're like, "Wow, that's from this!" <laughs> you know, I was so proud. I remember, <laughs> and you should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's from my formula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the one thing that I would encourage is a lot of the younger generation that are choosing bottle and breast, and what. I would encourage women to do is to, if they can give it a few weeks of breastfeeding only, because their milk supply, they, what they don't understand is, yeah, I'm going to bottle and breast from day one. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that when you bottle feed, you're not breastfeeding. And the only way milk gets stimulated mm -hmm. to make more is through the emptying of the breast. Not right. that it's ever completely empty, sure. but sufficiently mm -hmm. to, because that's what stimulates more supply. That's why a mother of twins can eventually oh. um, feed both of them mm -hmm. and, and uh, have enough milk for both, is it's the supply and demand mm -hmm. of empty. So mm -hmm. what happens is a lot of moms will come back with a subsequent pre pregnancy and say, I had low milk supply, mm -hmm. I had low milk supply. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of under, maybe she doesn't have enough breast tissue, milk making mm -hmm. breast tissue, not, not size of breast, but memory yeah. uh, mm -hmm. tissue to make enough milk. Or is there some other endocrine problem? Or is right. it just that there was not sufficient stimulation, mm -hmm. especially in those first few weeks? Mm -hmm. um, now, here's that, a question yeah. for you on that same note. Is it true, and I don't know if this is just a rumor or not, but is it true that women who adopt like a brand new newborn baby can 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 make milk yeah can they it, really if there's challenges but yes they can really so it's but not it's a usually, rumor it's usually through hormones and pumping oh okay well i've heard yeah. you know this yeah. is crazy you've yeah. probably heard this before but when i was young i heard that women who adopted brand new born baby can take like milk or yes. I actually heard goat's milk but that's got to be a fallacy yeah i don't know and that, yeah but, and, yeah. and 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 Almost have their on. yeah and have their baby um you know suckle their oh, their, their okay. breasts to try to get the milk flow pumping but i don't know is that oh you mean their adopted baby stimulant. their adopted oh. baby yeah. but to try to it's preparation before okay like i had so one mom stuff you that was do. adopting it was a private um adoption uh, she was there with the the biological mom uh, the bio, it was very loving situation in that the, love that. and they all varied you know some mm -hmm. have nothing to do once the baby's born right the surrogate and other ones are very involved this one was breastfeeding the biological was breastfeeding to give the baby that early um, benefits of the colostrum the yes. early milk mm -hmm. because it's so high in um, nutrition yeah, immune cells yeah. for yeah. the baby and high in protein mm -hmm. and then the mother that was adopting had been pumping and taking hormones oh, okay. um some are off label some are not so mm -hmm. i'm not really mm -hmm. going to because right. i can't you know it's practicing medicine without a uh, medical license to suggest certain medications or right but they can talk to there will be doctor uh, and, yeah. yeah but this woman had taken some hormones um and she was pumping for about a month before uh the baby was born so she had about 30 30 um, milliliters, wow. one ounce of wow. that, wow. and yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. The female body is incredible. <laughs> right, is right. Incredible. Now, whether she'll be able to 
have enough and continue. You know, yeah. but at least she can enjoy breastfeeding, giving that baby mm -hmm. some milk. Yeah. And the benefits of that, they've even proven that babies that get some milk will have lifelong benefits and mm -hmm. also less childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, even with that. some breast mm -hmm. milk, not you know, so mm -hmm. there's um, some wonderful bits. So really good question. Thank so. you. <laughs> yeah, I've always wondered that. <laughs> yeah. I have heard that. I've heard that, that, that you can about. produce. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's stimulate. Okay. I don't think I could. <laughs> 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 oh, well, not at this stage, Lord. Oh, well, you don't know. It could happen, I so. mean, girl, don't bet on it, honey. I don't think you want to be breastfeeding right any now. babies no. at this age. <laughs> just stick to my puppy well, dogs for entertainment. Oh, I, I know. Well, Naomi, Naomi Campbell just had a baby at 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, it's incredible. Right now, right? Yeah, she probably is. <laughs> Well, Peggy, thank you you're so welcome. much for the well, interview. It was wonderful information. <laughs> I've learned a whole lot. I know Me I too. have. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you shared so much information, too. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank yeah, you so, so much. It was fun. <laughs> the Savvy and Sage podcast is sponsored by author Summer K. Scott. Check out her series for young adults, The Chronicles of Heavenly Jordan. Books one and two are available now on Amazon and Kindle.